happen on a Thursday. It's about 11.31 on a Thursday night. Um, I'm just chilling at this point. I had a, you know, I had all, I only ate really, I'm still hungry, but I only really ate like, you know, two chicken patties and some bean salad for dinner. I didn't really didn't even eat lunch. I was supposed, I wanted to eat lunch, but then I went to do some bottles and cans, which turned out to be finally connecting with a neighbor who I tried to connect with earlier in the week that I finally connected with this neighbor who was able to help me get some stuff done that I needed. I, I wanted to get done earlier in the week that I was hoping to get done. You know, he finally, you know, got a hold of me. He was trying, he said he was trying to get a hold of me on Monday, but I wasn't in my apartment. You know, leave it to Greg, you know. It was fucking, it's fucking Greg's fault because leave it to Greg, you know, wasting my time, bringing me here and there. And I could have probably, I probably could have probably already got it done. And I probably could have already, you know, maybe, you know, felt better about life. Um, the thing is, this week was totally jumbled. You know, last week was totally jumbled. This week was totally jumbled. This week, especially, I needed my medical shot. You know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm an artist, but I struggle with my mental health and have mental health issues. And I needed a medical shot to maintain them. So I had to get my medical shot. Was, was it like Wednesday or like, you know, Wednesday or Tuesday? And um, I, I, I was at the point where I literally just needed to rest. I, I literally needed to rest. I needed to just shut down and rest a little bit more, you know, sleep, sleep in and do what I need to do to just relax, you know. But I made a big speech. I made a big speech about, you know, people handing me per handing people handing me poorly personally and professionally. I I want I, I want to put it this way. I was I want to say personally because they didn't handle me personally because the state can't really handle you personally. They got to handle you professionally. But in a prefer in a, in a personal matter of my recovery and being somebody who has to seek services from a mental health program. They were personally, you know, professionally handling me uh, with my mental health issues. And unfortunately, I did not like the way things were going, you know, for the last two weeks and et cetera and stuff like that where, you know, then they were asking me to do something professionally that I do after I do after hours. You know, I do a lot of my poetry and my art and stuff. At least I was trying to do it after hours and do it out in the community and stuff after hours. But then they have a nerve to ask me to do it for the, you know, for their conference and stuff. And I was almost considering it. I wasn't, I'm not going to lie. I was almost considering doing it for the conference. I really was. But um, apparently I felt very poorly handled, you know, from their professionalism and stuff that, you know, this, this week, you know, this week and last week that I, I kind of looked at my, my stuff and I said, I need to just cut it off and do what I need to do to just relax and do me and not really worry about it because it turned into a repetitive cycle. It turned into a huge repetitive cycle. If I just, just going back and dealing with them and talking with them puts me in this very, very loopy, you know, toxic cycle that I needed to break, you know? Um, but I feel like they weren't handling me professionally, good professionally in a personal matter, me being, a, you know, me being one of their clients, but had a nerve to ask me or was going to have a nerve to ask me to go up there and read professionally or, do, you know, share something I've done professionally that really, really I wanted to keep away from my mental health program because I didn't want to, you know, the mental health pro pro program coming into clashing with things and stuff with it, but, um, you know, I really had because I wanted to keep it separately from my mental health program. But they they heard me read they heard me read one, one poem once over the holidays, and now they're really now they're really egg, egging for more because they realize I have a lot of talent and I have a lot of power in the way I write and stuff like that. And you know, they people feel people feel like it should be heard by certain people. But I feel I felt kind of indifferently. I felt kind of indifferently from the start. You know. Um, not just because of my week and stuff, just because, you know, the people, the crowd, the crowd and stuff I would probably be reading for the people, the people are the people involved in what, you know, I, who I'd be reading for, and, you know, in the situation of the event and stuff, I wasn't, I wasn't totally comfortable to begin with, you know, I wasn't totally comfortable going up in front of a lot of people who, some people who obviously don't like me and some people who obviously can, you know, you know, don't want me to have the position that I'm in anyways to kind of sit there and kind of just give me like the evil eye and shit and put like, you know, evil energy towards me because I'm up there, you know, 
reciting something I do professionally after hours that a lot of people don't have the opportunity or things to get or do. And people are kind of upset and, you know, frustrated about it. So, um, you know, people are upset with me because I obviously didn't go to the recovery conference and I obviously just kind of, you know, let, you know, let, let it go straight to voicemail cause I was sleeping in and, I basically then, you know, blocked everybody on my phone. And I had, like, over, like, you know, 12 people to block on my phone, you know. So that way no no state phone and no state workers could call me for a while so I could just take a break. So all the state workers are blocked. And now, now Greg's actually being back to being blocked because he's kind of wasting my time after I tell him something or I tell him what I'm trying to do. He's trying to waste my time or ask me to spend my money on, on a way to, you know, benefit him and etc you know after he gave after after he lended to lended it to me to be able to do what i need to do for me now he's like gonna try to get self-centered like i'm gonna use it i use it on a way that's gonna benefit him and it's like not gonna work like that because i have things i need to do with it and i tried to tell him that but he's not listening so he's been calling me all like on and off about different things at first i was joking with him and stuff but then eventually it just gets kind of annoying you know where he thinks I'm gonna just spend my, you know, spend the money he let he lent me to get get him a grinder and shit. So he's because you know because he wants a grinder from somewhere and stuff, and he can't fully afford it. Well, I'm like sorry, you know. Um, I mean, I told him I would get, you know, I told him I might get Greg on the third or the first, you know. Usually when I get Greg on the third or the first, we usually go out for pizza or we do something. We do something on the first, you know. Um, right now he's blocked for a while because I just need to need him to stop giving me those those nonsense games, you know, where he kind of just wastes my time by you know talking to me about bullshit or trying to you know get me to you know do things that I'm not agreeing to because it's kind of taking me off my path, you know. So I, mean, I have no time for the bullshit, whether it's the state of Connecticut or whether it's Greg, you know, Greg, Greg, you know, means well at times. Other times he's you know he wastes time and he's just you know he's going nowhere. He's going nowhere, and he doesn't really have to go nowhere because he's like you know seventy to eighty years old, and he's already spent most of his life living. Me, on the other hand, I'm like thirty five and still looking for a wife, a kid. You know, uh, well, I want to have a kid. I mean, eventually, I want to have a kid, but um, a wife, a kid. You know, uh, a relationship. You know, some. You know, um. You know, I'm, I, I was told, though, too, that a relationship is not going to work for somebody like me. And maybe, maybe, maybe though, the universe is right, that a relationship might not work for somebody like me. Because the more, the more I look into things like a relationship, the more I look into things like a relationship and stuff, it just takes away from me. It takes away from my goals and just, just doesn't really add up to my life or the lifestyle and the things I'm trying to do and the things I'm trying to do while, while I'm living, you know? So it doesn't really add up to my goals and stuff. So I don't think a relationship would really be, you know, beneficial in a way, you know? I would like one that would be beneficial. I mean, it's not the fact that, I want, you know, there's not people out there that could be beneficial, but I don't think a relationship totally would be beneficial to me, you know, personally, you know? I feel like, you know, hooking up with somebody or trying to get into a relationship and you know a situation ship or whatever you want to call it is just going to create a situation ship and a thing that's just going to take away from me my time and the things i need to do to better my life and maintain you know and i don't have time to really do that you know um i was thinking about it i mean you know i i, I won't lie i mean i want to i want to like fuck around like a rabbit i mean i really do i mean i really you know i really would like you know some some human connection in that way where you know even though it's temporary i kind of want to fuck around like a rabbit but um <laughs> you know not not sit here and watch adult entertainment 24 7 but you know <laughs> uh i don't watch it 24 7 but i i mean i i i have access to it a lot you know Especially when I go into my Twitter now, I tell everybody my Twitter. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, watching adult entertainment. But I just, I just like. I mean, I forget sometimes. Sometimes I log into my Twitter, and next thing you know, in the morning, it's like early in the morning, and next thing it's like, boom, you're blasted with all these porn images, like early in the morning, and it's just like, wow, <laughs> you know. I mean, I really want to get Twitter basically off of my off of my uh, art artistic stuff because Twitter is no longer really an artistic an artistic page or really an artistic promoting page because 
I don't really like Twitter and I don't really know how to really promote myself on Twitter really to, you know, promote myself. And a lot of people, a lot of people promote themselves in porn and stuff and stuff like that, which, which is cool because they, they got a life, they get a life to live and it's their life to live. And I'm not going to sit there and judge them. But uh, for me, it's like I got to have a healthy balance between the two. I got to have a, a work life and I got to have a porn life. You know, I can have a porn life or you know, a sex life, too. And, you know be about sex and porn and stuff but i gotta have that healthy i gotta have that in between balance where i go i'm getting a lot of work done and i'm able to focus on myself you know and be really balanced but um i don't know it's just like i don't know sometimes sometimes i think the balance is a little off you know the balance is just like i don't know and some of it's just with the repetitive cycles too you know repetitive cycles you know I just got to look, I mean, I, I've learned a lot about, you know, repetitive cycles and time wasters and people, you know, people wasting your time and making you go in circles. And I just, I, I have no time for it anymore. I don't care if it's with the fucking state of Connecticut. I don't care if it's with my fucking family. I don't care who the fuck it's with. I, I, I don't have time for it anymore. I really don't, you know, I'm trying to do something and whether, whether I can be successful at it or not, I'm still trying to do it. I'm not going to say what I'm trying to quite completely do. Because in some cases, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. But, you know, I, I, I you know, it's, it's artistic. It's art. Most of most of it is artistic and, you know, artistic related. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Carl Nicholas Erso K art, you know, which was kind of what I kind of called myself. I mean, I kind of just called myself Carl Nicholas Erso. Uh, that would have been, you know, that would have been probably better. Um, I, I really, you know, part of, part of me also maybe wanted to call myself the art, art, art autistic, I, you know, artistic, autistic. I don't know if that makes sense, but our, 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 our artistic, our autistic, you know, it's kind of like hard to really say because it's a tongue twister. But basically it was saying like, I, I have autism, but I'm also an artist. You know, I was also thinking something like that, you know. Because there's a there's a there's a YouTube channel I watch sometimes for tarot and it's called the Aut Autistic Mystic, you know. So I was wondering if I could go get away with the autistic art, art the autistic art, art, artist, artist or something, and art, artistic or something. I you know what what I mean? It's like a tongue twister. I can't I can't fully say it, so I'm I'm not sure if I can really get away with you know promoting it. But um, it was something I was thinking about, you know, or you know coming up with something that you know called you know. But um, I'm at the point now where it's just like, you know, I mean, the, the damages are done. You know, the damages and stuff are done, per, you know, personally, you know, which took away from some things professionally for me today. But I do want to come back online. I do want to come back online and read a bunch of poems. I want to read a bunch of poems because a lot of people, a lot of people on my YouTube channel, I'm getting a lot of followers now, but a lot of people on my YouTube channel want to put me in high demand when it comes to reading my poems and saying what I need to say and stuff like that, a lot of people are putting me in high demand to really, you know, read my poems and express myself and, you know, really want to see and hear what I have to say and read. So, um, I'm hoping to do that. I mean, I, I might, want, I might come on, I might come online, you know, it's, it's mental health awareness month or at least May is still in bloom for another week. So I might do something for Mental Health Awareness Month. I might do a set of poems. I might do a set of my poems that are going to be basically based off of mental health, you know. I might do the two poems I was going to read today for the, you know, for the recovery conference. And I might do maybe a set of, of several more, several more poems. Because I, I have a couple poems that are related to mental health. But I might do like a mental health set of poems to celebrate Mental Health Awareness Month, you know. Just do a Facebook Live where mental health poems were, you know, to celebrate it, you know. Um, right, people, you know, I mean, people people know, I mean, it's kind of played out to have a mental health awareness book. But, I mean, my, my, my part of my poetry is geared around mental health and mental health awareness. But I think it's kind of played out to have a mental health awareness book or to have a book about mental health. I mean, I feel like there's tons of books about mental health out there that really, you know, either grab at people or they don't. So I think there's a kind of like a bad market and a good market for it, depending, you know. Um, so I'm not sure if I, you know, I would, I would ever put out a mental health book. I mean, maybe, maybe the mental health poems are part of, you know, a book I would make. But um, 
how and why and how I would go about it, I have no clue, you know. Um, I, I, I am excited. I am excited. There are, there are blessings. There's been tons of blessings. Oh, there's been tons of blessings this afternoon. This afternoon was a big blessing. Just being able to get to the food bank, which I'm thankful I got to the food bank. I'm thankful for my neighbor for doing that. Uh, getting me to the bank. I'm thankful for that. Um, got treated to a coffee. I got treated to a coffee and I was really thankful for that. Um, so um, I know I was having a really, I was having a really good day, you know, I was having a really good day and just trying to relax and chill. Um, hmm. Trying to think. But yeah, you know, um, so, so I kind of want to keep saying, stop saying, um, but, uh, <sighs> saying um because it's like I'm on the tip of saying something and I'm trying to get my words right before I say it you know (sighs) but they do you know No, but I will. I, I will come online and do a, do a set of poems for Mental Health Awareness Month. I don't know how many poems I'll do. I might just do a small set instead of like an hour set. I might do like a small set, maybe 20 minutes or so. I don't even know. I mean, it depends on how long I can get through the poems. But I might do a small set of poems because people people right now are putting me in demand on my, on my YouTube channel. They want to see more videos and stuff. And in a way I do kind of regret not getting a video from the mental health conference and doing that for mental health awareness month. But under the circumstances that I, I was under, you know, under the circumstances that I was under and, and my mental health, you know, putting my mental health and my, my well being first and doing one of the things I need to do, which I'm glad that kind of came up, came about afterwards and, I was able to do that, but, um, that was more of my priority this week. You know, I think, I think, I think between my scheduling, my workers scheduling, I mean, my workers say, Oh, it's our schedule, our schedule. It's not just your fucking schedule, dude. I was trying to tell you, it's also my fucking schedule. It's also a bunch of things. Just, just the last two weeks just, just didn't work out for nobody. I don't care whose fucking schedule it is. Your schedule, my schedule, it just didn't work out. It just never just didn't work out. I mean, I don't, I don't want to place the blame on anybody's schedule. That's when we become asinine and act like we know better than each other. And that's kind of like, you know, stupid. That's the ignorant shit that that, you know, black, you know, that black guy was telling me about, you know, um, that was working for, you know, um, <laughs> for, for the, you know, for the mental health agency. He was telling me, oh, you got to be grateful. You, we, we, we have, we have all these clients and stuff. It's like, I'm not, that's, that's not that I'm not grateful, you know. I mean, you know, it's not that I'm not grateful. I mean, you know, I, w- I would have been more grateful, but I mean, they, I mean, I, it, it seems like it's not common sense. It seems like people don't understand what I'm saying when I tell them, oh, you didn't meet me. You didn't meet with me for two months. You didn't meet with me for two months. You couldn't take me to the grocery store. You couldn't take me to the food bank. You couldn't even take me to the bank. You couldn't take me anywhere, not even to a doctor's appointment. I had to do a video call for a doctor's appointment because I was because I was uh, having issues and I had to do a video call over the video chat. You know, that's the fucking state for you, you know. The fucking state doesn't want to step in sometimes. It's not the first time that happened. They, you know, I was almost left for about a year or two, and I went through a lot of hell and a lot of different, you know, trials and tribulations, and ended up. I ended up wandering the streets. I ended up wandering Torrington for a very long time. You know, um, pretty much halfway out of my mind and shit like that. You know. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of debate on this, but they're, they're saying, oh, we didn't tell you could go off your meds. They actually did tell me, you know, the young adult, you know, the young adult people when I was in young adults for my mental health program, they did tell me I could go off my meds. They said, oh, well, you could. They didn't say they I mean, they were they, they acting like they, I could, they, you know, I, I that they didn't necessarily say go off your meds. But, yeah, they said, you know, don't stop taking your meds and shit like that, which ended up happening, you know. So they, you know, they, they basically, they basically, you know, pretty much fucked me over at that point, you know, um, you know, but then, then it was a huge blow up in issues and things. And next thing you know, everybody runs up, runs in and stuff like that. When they realize I'm really in a mental health crisis, I'm really actually struggling with my mental health, you know, 
I mean, I think I think people only would have realized that too because there was there was a lot more you know there was a lot more people in my life that were more involved that kind of ended up, ended up being able to catch it. You know, this time I'm trying to be more independent and stuff. And you know, God forbid there was a mental health crisis or something, or I was in some type of jeopardy or something, nobody would catch it. I would basically be stranded on my own or basically screwed. You know. Um, granted, there's no mental health crisis. It's just me just thinking that my workers are just bad business. You know, my mental health workers are bad business, and they, they I really didn't feel they had a right to ask me to do something that I was trying to. That had nothing to do. It has to do with my mental health programming and my mental health recovery, but in a way that it's that it's helping me outside of the program. It's not helping me in the program. It's something I did on my in my personal time and outside of the program, and a lot of, that's what a lot of my art is. You know, a lot of my a lot of my art is done outside of the program. It helps me, you know, it helps me for myself basically. You know, this is not like an everybody recovery type of thing. You know, I can I can kind of come together and make an everybody recovery type of thing. In fact, they wanted me to do so. They wanted to put me in the head of the art department or the head of an art project so people could start displaying artwork, including myself. And I was like, okay sign me up you know but um but with this particular project with the uh with the recovery you know conference i i, I didn't feel i felt the last two weeks were poorly handled on a very you know personal and professional note you know you know with, with my mental health workers personally and professionally and my work on their professionalism end and then, my, then i had to make a choice for me professionally because I, obviously I'm a, I'm a professional published poet I'm not, I, this is not just something I'm, I'm, I'm just doing just to do it. I mean, I'm a, pro, I'm a professional published poet. I'm in with some very important people, and I, 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 you know, I'm a very professional published poet. I, this is, this is me in a very, you know, very serious, you know, publishing situation, you know. And I don't want people screwing it up and stuff like that, nor, nor do I want to just do something for the, the whim of a mental health program that's not going to take me seriously, you know. I, I really have a lot of issues with that, you know? So, I mean, it's about 12 o'clock at night, and I'm just going to sit here and talk about this because I'm really fucking frustrated, and I don't feel like I can go to sleep without talking about it, you know? I really wanted to come online and do a poem or two, but I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm going to wait until tomorrow, you know? Wait until I got some time tomorrow and just do it tomorrow. But I got some things I still got to do to get, you know, get this place in order. So, um I don't have any bugs. I don't have any bugs, but the bill, the bill, you know, the floor, you know, floor I live on, you know, people say they were, they were, you know, people had bugs and stuff, but I've had them come in here and fumigate and stuff. And that's part of why they didn't want to meet with me for two, for two months is because, you know, the, the, there's a lot of questions of people on the floor having bugs and stuff and people, you know, people in the programming and stuff that were on my floor having bugs and wanted me to check my apartment to make sure the apartment was good. I mean, he, you know, it's another bug situation. If the people knew how bad and serious that was for me in the past, if people knew how bad and serious that was for me in the past, they would not be fucking with me right now. They would not be fucking me with me right now because I'm not in a fucking mood <laughs> to be fucked with, you know? So, um... <sighs> See, the problem, the problem I also have with the mental health program is that I don't really ever show anger. I really don't ever show anger or upset. But sometimes when I get really angry and upset, I get really angry and upset to the point that people must think I'm having a mental health crisis because I'm so I'm so angry. I get so aggressive. I almost get so aggressive with it, you know. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm like really like a like a really kind of person that's like I, I i really i really try to like cope with my emotions and i don't really ever really get as angry or let myself get that angry unless there's something that really gets me angry and then it's like then the balance of me like me being really calm and nice turns into really you know really kind of angry and aggressive and you know that people think i'm having a mental health crisis but really you know it's just sometimes it's just me not tolerating the bullshit and shit you know and then people people have a you know that's the thing about mental health programs they can say oh well you're still having a crisis because you know mental health is created towards your mind and and, and you can't really you know act out and treat people like that that's part of a mental health problem and i'm like me, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, no. Did you check your actions? Did you check that you were near not fault? Did you check that you know the reason why I'm not actually kind of having a blow up because of you or this is something you did? You know, it's very rare that the, the state or anybody would check up something that they that they would did before before I would get angry and then blow up and the next thing you know I'm, I'm blamed for a mental health crisis. And that's that's the problem with the fucking state of Connecticut. You know, the fucking state of Connecticut can kiss my fucking ass. 
suck my fucking <laughs> language, language. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, I'm 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 all right. I really am all right. I just I just don't think people handle me professional. No, I've had a lot of professional problems too. I mean, I've I've tried to get you know professional professional. I won't say professionally professional. Oh. Yeah, I'll say it this way. Professionally, other people wanted to try to get involved to do things for mental health, for mental health awareness and stuff like that with the clients and stuff of my mental health program. But in some cases, over over about a year or month's worth of time, they quickly realized that some of the people within that programming and stuff and et cetera had no care for their business and had no care for what, you know, for what they were trying to do and establish for their business and try it for their customers and et cetera. And I'm, unfortunately, I kind of got roped into some of that because I, I had brought people as my plus one and they didn't really care about me. They didn't really care about the business and et cetera. So, you know, the business kind of went under, kind of had some issues, you know. But, you know, regardless, the business also made a, made a choice to, you know, meet with the mental health program and, you know, do things, these things for the mental health program. And I was instantly mad from the start because I didn't think certain people should have gotten involved with what I was trying to do because I thought I don't want people to ruin it for me and et cetera, because people don't know how to behave or act sometimes. And certain people take a good thing and they know how to ruin it and destroy it. So. Um, I was I was always kind of against my mental health program trying to get involved with me as an artist and stuff. I always wanted to keep it separately, and I've I've been through probably like three or three or four situations like that, getting involved with people from you know my my, my mental health program and stuff like that. Where I, I've I've I by now have learned a lot better that if I can just be on my own and not get involved with people you know with mental health pro programs and stuff, I might be a lot better off. You know, not saying that people with mental health programs are not human and stuff like that because we're all human, but at the same time, I can't let people's issues and things that they're doing that are not you know not elevating and they're not going to a level that I'm hoping to go to kind of drag me down. You know, I can't do that shit anymore. I can't, I just can't fucking do it, you know? So I'm, I'm at the point now. <coughs> <coughs> I'm at the point now where I'm trying to do my own thing. I'm at the point now and trying to do my own thing and <coughs> Try to do my own thing and just try to chill and, you know, just try to make things work and stuff like that, you know. People don't need to know exactly what I'm up to because I don't fully know exactly what I'm up to. I mean, I take it day by day, you know. I, I know one thing. With Greg, too, I waste a lot of time. I waste a lot of time with Greg. You know, Greg has a lot of time to waste because he's older and he's not really going anywhere with no goals or aspirations. He's in a time of his life where he can just retire and spend money and just chill and just, you know, jack off whack off and waste time you know me on the other hand i i i want to i still want to stand for something i still want to build for something i still want to do something with my life that's going to be meaningful and purposeful you know i mean if, if not you know existing and doing what i do doesn't have a purpose in itself already i don't know but you know I am very fucking frustrated with shit. I really am. And I don't think people really get how fucking frustrated I am with the mental health programs. And, you know, I mean, I don't think in some cases the mental health programs to realize that they don't fully have a right to ask me to even really go up on stage to begin with. You know, I kind of decided to just read one poem at, at, at the Thanksgiving event, which is kind of what started it. My poem about sunrise I did at the Thanksgiving event. I, I went on up on stage and I did it, you know, um... But, I mean, a lot of people didn't want to quiet down. A lot of people didn't really want to even hear the poem. They wouldn't, like, shut up for me to hear the poem. Somebody had to literally tell them to shut up so they could, you know, so they could hear the poem because they were trying to, like, hear me read. And people wouldn't, just wouldn't shut up or be respectful. So it's like, you know, people just, you know, people are doing, people in the mental health programs don't care. They won't take you per seriously professionally and stuff like that. I want to be around people who are going to be serious about it. I mean, not every not everybody who, you know... Obviously, I've had a talk with my, you know, my psych doctor about, you know, reading in front of people who don't, who might not really want to, you know, might not be totally happy for you, you know, getting up there and reading in front of people who, you know, want to give you the evil eye or et cetera, might not be 100% happy for you. But, um, 
you know, she thought I should go face adversity and go up there and read and, and read in front of a bunch of people and show the world that I actually have talent and there's actually a few surprises and things that I actually have been kind of keeping quiet about. But uh, the reason why I'm keeping quiet about them is because there's certain things and people I just don't want involved. I just don't want people, you know, to really ruin my fucking life, you know, or ruin any more of my chances or help, you know, or try to, you know, get me involved in shit that's going to ruin my chances, you know, and some, some, some of that, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. Some of that is my, some of that were my ghetto fucking exes, my ghetto fucking exes, my fucking ghetto exes. I'm not even going to lie about that. You know, um, you know, I had a couple exes that I, I really regret, you know, ever, ever dating, you know, they, they were, you know, a couple of them were cutters and, you know, they were doing the drugs and legal issues and, I, I, I kind of look back and say, yes, I mean, I, I, I mean, I like black women. I don't like the ghetto. Well, I kind of do like the ghetto black women, and I guess that's kind of a curse. But I, I really don't belong with a ghetto black woman because some ghetto black women are just all about the hands and all about the, you know, behavior that basically, you know, basically they're, they'll just tip shit over and just, you know, cause drama and shit. And that's not the kind of behavior I need for somebody who's going to take me professionally, you know, but I, when I looking back at some of my exes, I cannot, I cannot date some of my exes. I mean, I, I, I cannot go back to my exes. I can, I just can't do it. You know, I mean, there were exes for a reason. I mean, I, you know, I liked them. I mean, I liked them. They were, they were, they were pretty black women. I, I did like them at one point. At least, at least I wanted to try to be the man they needed. Was I the man they needed? No, I was not the man they needed. I was, I I actually failed at being the man they needed and that's why they're my exes. But but that, that, that's another story for another time. So, (laughs) but I am, I am trying to do something with my life and I am trying to prosper and do what I have to do. Um, yes, I mean, yes. I mean, people, people wonder too, because I'm trying to aim for it to be, to, to, date a woman because I read you know my preference my preference basically right now is to date, date a woman basically I mean it doesn't necessarily have to be a black woman I mean I have, I have a preference for a black woman it doesn't have to be a black woman but my preference is to detectively date a woman you know not date a man because I, I mean I'm bisexual but I mean I, I I you know men men seem to just send me a lot of dick pics in my inbox and shit and it just makes me very uncomfortable and you know feel like I'm wasting my time. I mean half these men are halfway across the world or had another state and I match with them, but there's really nothing that's gonna really ever come between us and stuff like that. So you know, but and I have dated I have been with black men and black women. You know, I have been with black men and black women. Um, I have, you know, I have, but I think I have some cases I've kind of picked the wrong ones and that's kind of why I got the exes that I have. And I mean, my, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, but then again, I, then again, I like, I like to believe that opposites attract. I'm not going to sit there and lie to anybody. I like to believe the opposites attract, you know, and I am kind of attracted to some, some people who are kind of like opposites, you know, especially like in, in their, in, their, in their, like an opposite of a background too, you know, I am kind of attracted to people who are, you know, opposites to me a little bit. And it just, you know, it, it just is what it is. I mean, I like black women, but apparently, you know, some of the black women I get are, you know, I mean, I, I know all black women are not the same. And I know, I know that now because I've, I, I've, I've, you know, ran into people who, unfortunately, they 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 were very much like me as as an as an author and as a writer and et cetera. But they're you know they're too advanced with their lives to really you know take take my my situation and the stuff that I'm dealing with and stuff and really kind of, kind of run with that and do what they got to do too, you know. I think that's what makes it very hard to really date an artist and have an art an artist to have really time to really date anybody, you know, or really kind of take anybody seriously to date is because artists really have a lot to do and they really want to have a lot to maintain to really, you know, do what they got to do. And I, I'm almost at the end of my rope in a way, you know, I mean, I, I have, I'm kind of losing my sense of direction because I'm losing my I'm losing my sense of self and direction at the same time. It's really hard to explain, you know. It's like I had a job, I lost a job, um, had a job, I lost a job, uh, I was in with some artists, I lost, I fell out with the artists, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm having like a very big mix up and problem, you know, 
and I'm like 35, so I'm in that time of my life in my 30s where, you know, you're going to have those type of situations and you're going to gonna be like, you know, you what, what do you do with your life now? What do you do with your life now to be able to go forward and blossom and bloom and do what you got to do, you know? So, unfortunately, I don't really know what I'm going to do with my life. I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. I mean, I had a couple of, like, internships. I've had a couple of jobs. I've had a couple of gallery showings, you know, but I'm still really not where I want to be as an artist and, and somebody who <laughs> I feel can be taken fully, you know, successfully and, and professionally in a very serious matter. Um, but yeah, you know, but yeah, the mental health people did not get me to read for them today. I mean, I'm not going to keep bringing it up too much, but that's kind of what what, what, the, what today was supposed to be about. Today was supposed to be the, you know, the event for, you know, the recovery conference for Mental Health Awareness Month. And I was only going to, I mean, I could tell you which poems I was going to read. I mean, I read them before. I mean, I could tell you which poems I was going to read or I was going to come back online and do a video and just tell you through the video. But I, I ended up, I ended up not, not going to, I was going to read, I was going to read one of my heavier poems. I got three heavier poems. I got Schizoaffective Mind, Feeling Like Broken Art. And monster, which is mental illness, but I read monster, which is mental illness at the at a recovery vigil that was at the Warner Theater. I read, I did that, you know. Um, I meant, and the feeling like broken art was in the bulletin. Feeling like broken art was in the uh, mental health bulletin, but um, you know. I, I, I haven't really read Schizoaffective Mind, but I just, I, 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 the good thing I kind of did read it. I kind of read it at the open mic night. I kind of read Schizoaffective Mind because the reason why I did that is because uh, there was a big, you know, a big debate over, you know, just reading things with like a, like one or two swears in them at, at the, op at the uh, you know, recovery conference open mic thing that they wanted me to do today. They were like, you know, you can't really swear, you know, they don't want you to really swear. I mean, then they were saying, oh, one swear is not going to hurt, but I kind of dropped the swear poems. At least I was, oh, I, at least I dropped the swear poems. I was, I was, I decided not to read those. What I was going to read, what I was going to read, I was going to read my poem called I am King. I was going to read my poem called I am King. And I was going to read my, uh, my poem called early morning cup of coffee, you know, early morning cup of coffee. Cause I feel like, you know, a lot of people in recovery might, might like coffee, you know, there's people that go to AA and there's people that really struggle with things. And I think, you know, everybody can relate to having a cup of coffee in recovery, but, um, you know, I, I had a cup of coffee today, you know, but I was going to read my poem with early morning cup of coffee, which was actually for the Jack Kerouac's a hundredth, hundredth and something birthday, you know, to honor Jack Kerouac, who was actually one of the, you know, founding beat poets that started the, you know, the beat poetry movement that basically, you know, has, you know, kind of taken me under their wing, you know, kind of, you know, and, and our branch of it has taken me under their wing to be able to read and be a, be a poet and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, at this point, at this point, I, I, I don't really, you know, I don't really know what to, what to really say, you know, my workers, my workers might remain, remain blocked for a few weeks. I mean, I mean, a few weeks, maybe, maybe into, maybe into the next month, I was supposed to go grocery shopping. I was supposed to go grocery shopping in June, you know, and I'm not sure who's going to take me because if my worker's still out, I don't think I really want to work with this black guy named Corey because this guy, Corey, basically and I are clashing. I worked with him a couple of times and I feel like we're just size we just trying to size each other up and we just try to bullshit each other and I'm just like really don't wanna bullshit him because I really actually don't even like the guy and I'm like I really just I'm not really bullshitting him. I really just don't like him, you know. I'm trying to be professional about it and handle it and be nice about it, you know. And I, I try to handle it and be nice about it, especially with my medical shop, but I really don't like the guy, you know. And ironically he calls me today saying, Hey, I'm gonna bring you to the recovery conference. I'm like no, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> That's another reason I didn't really get in the van with anybody to go because I didn't really want to go in the van with him. 
you know, after he gave me a speech about being thankful and he was kind of ignorant to tell me to tell me things. I mean, I was trying to explain to him my situation and stuff. Of course, I wasn't feeling 100 percent well and couldn't give all my information to try to explain how I where I was coming from and et cetera, which is kind of my fault. But I wasn't feeling well, which is not really my fault because nobody should be blamed for not feeling well or not, you know, having to feel like they, you know, they're just not okay at the moment, you know, so, but, you know, the state is asinine, the state's asinine, and I'm not, I'm not really happy with it, you know, um, not, not only that, not only that, you know, I, 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 there were a couple, there were a couple of, there were a couple of, uh, there were a couple of people, there were a couple of people that, um, you know, work, work for, you know, the state or work as, you know, work in, work, work within the state that, um, you know, were, were artists, they were artists and they were authors and stuff, you know, they were artists and authors and stuff that I met after hours and stuff that I met through, that I met basically through, you know, through the poetry things and stuff I did, you know, we, I, they didn't have the state, you know, they didn't really have the state jobs and stuff and et cetera. And until like the pandemic came along, you know, we were getting to know each other. And then all of a sudden the pandemic came along and then months within the pandemic, there was, a, there was a questionable issue over, confidentiality and, and, and recovery issues and things like that and you know but apparently there was a lot of things that happened personally personally between me and everybody and there's a lot of things of things that I got you know advised I'm not really advised about but like kind of told about or like like you know counseled counseled on in therapy that you know of, of, of what to do and etc and I think looking back at, at what I had to do in you know because of my therapy session how people felt like I should have gone about it I feel like it did a lot more damage to those relationships and, and people going forward and etc now than you know than anything but I do know some people or I did know some people who you know worked worked with you know advocacy unlimited and stuff that were you know were 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 our poets that you know are from like the Hartford and Enfield area. So, um, you know some of my, some of my relationships with them are a little rocky because of racial issues. I mean, not saying I was being racist, but there were a lot of racial you know racial issues and things like that. Mis I want to say misunderstandings, you know, misunderstandings and things. I mean, if I'm if I'm being a little racist now or whatever, I don't even really give a fuck because it's like I kind of came up to the the point now where it's like people wanted to call me out for being racist, 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 and now 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 I said to myself, fine, if I'm gonna if I have to end up being racist and I just end up being racist and you know that that's just the way it is and you know after people said you know, that, you know putting that into the universe or putting that out there that Carl's racist 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 without really even knowing me but then I just decide okay one day I decide okay I'm gonna be racist keep people can't blame me people can't blame me because originally I'm not racist you know originally I'm not racist and people don't really know the who know the true me or know who the fuck I am to really say that I'm a racist and etc I mean of course my poetry friends kind of knew me and stuff like that but they didn't really get a chance to fully get to know me know me because of anxieties and things I had and stuff like that but some of that also came from like my therapy session and things that were being told to me and etc with my mental health workers and stuff like that so um I think some of it might be sabotage because I think they did know who some of those people were that I was working with. I think they knew who they were. I think they might have mutual friends within like the programming and stuff like that, that they do know who the people I was talking about were, to, you know, but they can't tell me because of confidentiality or they don't want to tell me to be real to my face. So now there's a big issue with, you know, potential authors and things that I was supposed to work with for the sake of my career and the sake of me, me coming up and stuff like that, you know, there's going to say, of me basically not coming up and me being kind of sabotaged because now they're going to try to work for the state and etc. And now I can't really come up with them and I'm going to have to really kind of feel some type of way about it in my mental health programming too because of the things that have happened. So I don't think that's very appropriate either and very fair, you know, of, of those publishers to really do to me, you know. But yeah, one, 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 some of those publishers are pro-black and I'm, not, I'm never going to be black. I've already explained that. I'm never going to be black. I'm, I'm I'm a white person. I'm a white Italian person. I'm never gonna be black. I mean, I'm I'm German. I'm Russian. I'm Italian. I'm French Canadian. They're Canadian French. Um, Czechoslovakian. 
and there may be a little Latin in my blood, but the Latin comes from comes from the, the I think the foreign language that you know Italians speak a form of Latin. Italians speak a form of Latin. You know, um, they're they're from Europe, but they speak a form of Latin. So I think the the Latin I I'm more you know associated with is more of an Italian origin than actually you know actually a. Uh, Spanish origin. I'm kind of realizing that. I didn't. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I it, dawned, it didn't dawn on me because I didn't really realize. I didn't realize that you know the Italians have their own language. Italians have their own language. You know, we we have actually a foreign tongue in, in Italy. You know, so technically, technically, Italians are foreigners. Italians are actually foreigners. So they were probably foreigners to the United States, just like you know the black immigrants are, and you know the people that you know came over here that are refugees and stuff, you know. So so did Italians. Italians are also foreigners too because we have a language that's not necessarily American either. So um, people who are born here get the American language, but the people who are like born in Italy and have more like an Italy upbringing, they, they know how to speak actual Italian, which is more of a Latin dialect that's not necessarily American. So my ancestors are really, you know, my ancestors are really foreign. You know, my ancestors are foreign and they came from another country, you know. But I mean, I, I want to do my ancestors more proud than I really rather rather do for the black community. It's like people say, oh, get involved in black politics, stick up for the black community, stick up for this and that. You know, I mean, I was doing that for a while and I, everybody told me I wasn't doing it right. Everybody told me you weren't doing it right. You weren't doing it appropriately. You know, we feel you as a white man shouldn't be involved in these politics. You're not, you know, it's just not, not appropriate for you. And I, I agree. Well, for once, I agree. I talked to some people. They agreed, and I agree, and we we just agree that, you know, honor my own ancestry, honor my own self, and see which black woman or somebody loves me for being a white man, a white Italian man who is kind of a mutt. I'm kind of a mutt because I am kind of have a lot of upbringing from Europe that's kind of mixed, but, um, you know, um, you know, so, but I'm honoring my ancestry. I'm honoring my, my people and people don't like the fact that I actually am European or people don't like the fact that I'm white and people don't like the fact that I want to cross mingle with people outside of my culture and you know, my background because, you know, obviously I got to feel some type of way because, you know, because of what's being said on the, on the leftist agenda that, you know, because I, because I'm left and I, 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 I say this, or I believe this, you can't, you know, you got to believe it too. And you got to feel that way. It's kind of how I feel about the right people, the, the, the right people too, because I, I, I grew up with a really conservative mother and she's like, because I'm Christian, you got to believe this and because this is my upbringing. This is going to be your upbringing too. And you're going to have to believe this because I believe it, which is not necessarily the case, you know? <laughs> You know, I, I, I might be more God. I might be more about God these days, and more about leaning on God. But that doesn't mean I'm necessarily as conservative as my mother. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm as conservative as as, as I, I mean. I doesn't mean I'm not, as, It doesn't mean I'm as leftist or left as as some of the liberals either. You know. As Joseph Arthur would say, it all depends. You know, he got called he got called leftist and loony bin because he wrote something about. Uh, you know, about, uh, you know, ceasefire now, which was about, you know, about the things going on over the Middle East. And, uh, then, then he got basically called, you know, all, all right type of guy because he was talking about, you know, uh, free speech and stuff like that. And people, people, you know, people wanted to censor him and felt like, you know, he was being, he was being an all right person for talking about free speech. So it really doesn't matter what side you're on. You could be about certain values and things, and then you could be, you'll be, you'll be called this and that because every, you know, everything has to do with people, people's opinions and politics. You know, everybody wants to put it, put it towards one way or another. So it doesn't really fucking matter what you do. You just got to live your life and be fucking happy and leave the politics and everything at the door and just go fucking wild, you know? <laughs> but yeah, if I, if I, if I, if I, if I seem a little racist or I seem a little, you know, if I seem a little racist or I seem a little, a little, um, a little offbeat and stuff like that, then I, I, I guess I am. I mean, I don't merely mean to hurt people and et cetera, but, um, you know, 
I'm 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 I was I'm tired of I was tired of people saying it. I'm tired of people saying it. But then again, I'm embracing being white, and if being embracing being white and going about things from being a from being a white white person in a white perspective, if you know doing that and going about it really you know really um upsets people, then I don't know what to tell them because my skin color is not going to change. You know, but this is not about really about race. This is just about you know society and life in general. And unfortunately, what I was trying to say, too, is that the publishers that I fell out with that are working for kind of kind of working for, you know, certain people in the state are trying to work for certain people in the state. They they, they have a very thing about being pro black and et cetera, which I think only is really going to cause a lot of racial issues for me and et cetera, because I'm not black. And there's, there's going to be a push that, you know, is going to try to go towards people in the black community that I've either dated to have a vendetta for me or people that I've, I've, I know tried to date or tried to get to know and try to be friend that, you know, are black that obviously have decided to be a friend of me or somebody who screwed me over. And the next thing you know, that's going to turn into a fucking, a fucking, uh, you know, race war, et cetera. If it hasn't already, if it has not already, cause I, I have a feeling it's already turned into a race war and a problem. Thanks to, you know, thanks to, uh, the cultural groups in Hartford and, you know, fucking Torrington, you know? So, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and just say, you know, but I don't know. Well, am I going to be celebrating Juneteenth this year? I mean, I, I should in the sense that, you know, I'll, well, no. I, no. Truthfully, truthfully, I'm not going to be celebrating Juneteenth. I'm not I'm really not. I, was, I, I'm, I shouldn't even say I should because I'm not. I, I mean, I, I mean, I should. I should celebrate something for Black women in the sense that you know, Black women. You know, I want to celebrate Black women and Black men because I appreciate them. But I don't want to celebrate Juneteenth because I feel Juneteenth is a very you know liberal pushed holiday, and I don't want to celebrate the type of liberalism that comes with the holiday. So. I mean, I, I want to celebrate black people. I want to celebrate, you know, black women, black men. And, you know, I want to be able to celebrate them and love them. But, yeah, I mean, will I celebrate anything that's politically pushed like a holiday and stuff? No, I will not. I, I, I'm i feeling very picky about, you know, holidays and how they're, you know, federal or how, how they're politically pushed and stuff like that, you know, to, to push an agenda. I don't I don't like that stuff. So I won't be celebrating Juneteenth. I will be I will be reading I will be reading again I will be reading poetry again in a couple of months I will or not a couple of months a few weeks a few weeks I'll be reading poetry again I'll be I'll be at my open mic night so a few a few in a few weeks I'll be reading poetry again and I'll be able to get up on stage and read so I'll be up on stage reading my poems and doing what I need to do to you know express myself again on stage you know I didn't necessarily have to do it with the with the mental health program. I, I mean, I do it. I do it like once a month on my own and professionally on my own. You know, regardless. So, um, I am trying to sell my artwork at the events. I'm trying to get my art. You know, sell a little five dollar to ten dollar painting to see if I could sell some art and see if I you know can make a couple bucks. But I mean, for the most part, everything's very slow and everything's just, you know, everybody wants to be very competitive and I'm com I'm kind of competing against my friends. I won't lie. I got a lot of friends and a lot of people in the arts that are friends and stuff, but they're also my competitors. You know, my friends are also my competitors because they got, well, they got a lot of books and stuff too when it comes to, comes to things they're trying to sell and stuff too over my art. So there's like a, there's like a competitivism, competitivism among friends when it comes to trying to promote and sell your work. I mean, some I won't lie. A lot of my friends, a bunch of bunch of my a bunch of my friends at the open mic night and stuff. A bunch of my friends at the open mic night and stuff had bought my art. So there's a couple people that actually have bought my art. Sometimes more than once they had bought a couple pieces of my art. So I'm very thankful that my friends at the open mic have bought my art. I've even bought a couple of their books too. I bought a couple of their book their books and stuff when I could too. The thing is, I don't always have a lot of money, you know. But hopefully, hopefully, since it's going to be at the beginning of the month, I should have a little bit of money to be able to, you know, maybe buy a book or something at the beginning of the month and see where things go, you know. Um, but, yeah. Anyways, just wanted to chill, wanted to say how I feel. I, 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 you know, I, I'm, I'm probably upset a lot of people. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not over. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of, a lot of, you know, make, there's still a lot of feelings and things that need to be addressed and stuff at some point, you know, with the mental health program. And 
I don't know when I'm going to do it because I'm going to be I'm going to be as distant as possible for for quite a while. So, um, just just because I mean I, I might be distant and I might be distant and quiet up until the first week of June, you know, and then then I might see who's going to take me grocery shopping. But I mean, I just I just need a week or two off to just be able to breathe and do what I got to do. So, um. But you know, I'm I'm doing what I got to do to just chill and just you know be me and you know be happy. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm gonna move for something sweet. I don't know why, but I have nothing sweet in the house, and I'm gonna move for something sweet. So I might have to go to the store tomorrow with a couple bucks I have left and try to get something sweet to just you know stop a very serious craving that I want something sweet. You know, I got nothing sweet in the house. Um, I will, I will at the be. I will at the beginning of next month. I don't know if I'm going to stop and shop. I don't know where I'm going, but I will, I will eventually have, you know, something sweet to grab, but I just, right now I just don't have it. So anyways, I'll come online and I've got a few, a few days, you know, a couple like tomorrow, a few days, who knows? And I'll come, I'll, I'll read the mental health poems. I think I just got to get them all together. Figure out which mental health poems I'll read and come forth and read them. So, um, but yeah, so...